Hey everybody, welcome to Divine Conversations. My name is Eric, thank you so much for joining me, and welcome to your June monthly readings for each and every zodiac sign, yeah? Um, if you've been following me for some time, you know that I use, I was doing readings bi-monthly for the zodiac signs, but that has become too taxing, okay? It's a lot, a lot of work, and I have a lot going on um, in life, so I have to really pull it back a little bit. So instead of doing bi-monthlies, I'm just going to do it once a month for each zodiac sign. However, I am adding some extra oracle guidance into the readings. And this is something that I've been wanting to do for some time now. I'm really, really excited to bring this to you guys. For this month, I will be pulling, I will be using, um, you know, the traditional Tarot deck. I have the Arcanum deck that I'm using this month. But then for Oracle Guidance, I'm going to be pulling Action Oracle Guidance from the Oracle of the Unicorns by Cordelia Francesca Brobs. I love this deck because mainly I love, I just love unicorns. And then we have um, Spiritual Guidance from the Crystal Mandala deck by Alana Fairchild, okay? I'm, I'm really so happy to be doing it this way. Um, I actually wanted to add Oracle Guidance into it for some time now, but because it was bi-monthly and it was so much work to begin with, I didn't want to make the readings longer um, and take more time than I had to. But now because I'm doing this, you know, once a month, I'm definitely going to be keeping this Oracle Guidance in. I may switch it up. I think I am going to stick with the Crystal Mandala Oracle for spiritual guidance, but I may change over when it comes to action, uh, physical guidance from the oracles. Okay, I am available for private readings. Um, all of the information for that is in the description box below. So if anything resonates with you and you want to get a deeper understanding of it, please don't hesitate to reach out. You can email me and we can chat a little bit and I can schedule you and all and everything like that. Um, payments are through PayPal. I will send you a uh, an invoice from PayPal and we can do that. As soon as payment is secure, I will be able to uh, schedule your reading officially. Um, and just in case anyone was wondering if you are in the New York City area or you will be in the New York City area anytime soon, I am still doing readings at Om Shanti Bookstore. I'm sorry, bookshop in um, Manhattan on 14th Street between 2nd and 3rd Avenue. The website is in the description box below. Um, if you do want to get a reading with me there, I highly recommend that you call ahead of time and schedule the reading. I am there every Monday from 11 to 5. Um, scheduling it that way will ensure that you get your reading um, at the time that you want. Otherwise, if you walk in, you know there's a risk that I may not be available at that moment or whatever, okay? Please keep in mind, guys, that these are general readings, all right? So take what resonates with you and leave what doesn't. And please do not try to fit something in where you know it doesn't belong, okay? If something doesn't resonate with you, just let it go. Um, and also, if you know you're in the reading and you're getting in there and it does, it's not really resonating with you and you've been watching it for a few moments and it's still not resonating with you, just move forward. I do encourage you guys to check out not only your sun sign, but your moon, your rising, and your Venus, okay? Your sun sign um, is, you know, it is like the main thing, sure, but then watching your moon and your rising, at least, can help you get more information. And like, if you don't resonate with your sun sign, then you might resonate with your moon and rising. And then also, if you're looking for love guidance, I would highly recommend that you check out your Venus sign, okay? You could not, you may not resonate with any of them except for one, you know? So like, just check it out, see how you feel and see what resonates. And I believe that's all, yeah. So without further ado, let's get into the readings. <laughs> Hey Aries, welcome to your reading for June. Thank you so much for tuning in with me. I am very, very excited to be back in and doing these for you guys, for all of us, all zodiac signs, the human collective and all that stuff, all that good, good stuff, yeah? So let's just get straight into this. Um, and sorry, hold on, there's a bunch of crap under my desk. <laughs> okay, let's just get into this and see what comes out for June. So, all right, spirit, please make me a clear channel for all Aries, sun, moon, rising, and Venus. Please bring forward the best messages for Aries for the month of June 2018. 
Thank you so much, Spirit, you guys. I'm giggling because I'm just so excited to be back in and doing this. So, okay, here we go. Aries. For the month of June 2018. What do we have for you, Aries? One more shuffle. Ah, I'm so excited. Okay. <laughs> One more shuffle. All right. Cut the deck. Okay. All right, Aries. Starting off with ooh, the world in reverse. There is an ending at play. Okay. I mean, I want to say there's blockage or resistance, but that's not the main thing I'm picking up here. Often, um, when I started reading reversals, it started to become apparent to me that there are many ways that you can read a reversal. There could be a blockage, there could be resistance, um, something could be released, or you could be in the process of going through something. And that's what I'm picking up for the most part here, Aries, with the world in reverse. There is a process of Big endings, big changes, major cycles are in the process of coming to an end here. Now, with that said, and this is why Spirit was also saying to me, well, yeah, there are some blockages or there is some resistance. With that said, because this process is, is in the process of coming to an end, um, you could be feeling resistances. There could be some last little triggers that are coming up here and there. You could be feeling some egoic resistance, some egoic, some pressure from your ego to like, to like stop doing what you're doing. Like, this is crazy. Why are you doing this? Like, you know, this is not, you know, it's not going to work out the way you want it to, or the way you're expecting to. Honestly, that is literally just your ego, um, flaring up and just acting in ways that it's been trained to, it's been conditioned to, to, to react, but also because we've allowed this to, to react this way for so long. Um, of course it's going to do the same thing that it's always done. So this, could be, for some of you, there could be some big ego deaths that are happening right now. Um, there could be some big ego flares and it may just feel difficult. Um, you know, it just may feel really challenging. That's why the world is coming up in the end for some of you. Yeah, look, and then we have the Eight of Swords. Now this is the representation of you of your ego flaring up. This is you feeling like you're trapped. This is your ego saying to you, no, this isn't gonna happen, this can't happen, you're crazy, you're foolish, you shouldn't be doing this, why are you doing this? Mm -hmm. But see, the beauty of the Eight of Swords is you have the power to finesse your way out of this entrapment, okay? This is literally all in your mind. Your ego could be putting up the resistance that is coming, that is I'm picking up on with the world in reverse. But I want you to understand that the world is here, regardless of whether it's reversed or upright, the world is here. These processes, these cycles are ending. And you wanna know why I'm confident in saying that? We've also got the Ace of Wands, upright, okay? Inspiration, brand new ideas, brand new projects. I'm seeing this Ace of Wands as a phoenix rising from the ashes situation. Like you are literally coming out of, wow, and just as I'm saying this, Aries, it just feels so right. You are literally coming out of some sort of darkness. You could be exiting a dark night of the soul. Um, and please understand that dark nights of the soul cycles, they happen constantly, okay? So don't think that you're coming out of a dark night of the soul with this brand new inspiration and you're never gonna experience one again. I don't want you to be afraid of these dark, 44, 44 on the counter. I don't want you to be afraid of the dark night of the soul process because ultimately that's a really, really good thing. You're purging, you're releasing things that no longer serve you. But in this moment for June, for you, Aries, you are literally coming out of the darkness illuminated in a brand new way, okay? And that's really fucking fantastic. And yeah, guys, look at this. And underneath all of that, we have the devil in reverse. This is you, this is where a reversal is talking about a release, okay? This is a release t from attachment, conditioning, uh, self-deprecation, negative, toxic energies, people, places, environments, jobs. I mean, this really, whatever the devil represents for you, whatever the devil at its um, codependent attachments and um, toxic re realities represents for you, you are releasing this. 
okay? You have the world in reverse, which is speaking to this process of release and renewal and starting something new, especially with the Ace of Wands. You have the Eight of Swords, which is your ego fighting like hell, okay? Fighting like hell. 55, 55 on the counter. I mean, change, guys. Change is... Woo! Change is the name of the game, y'all. All right, let's get into the storyline here. We have the Ten of Pentacles in reverse with the Hermit in reverse. All right, so um, many of you are coming out of this Hermit stage. Um, you went into it, something got stirred up, and you were forced to, to go within to find your own inner light, okay? The Ten of Pentacles in reverse is a false sense of material or physical completion that has now been illuminated when you went within with the Hermit, okay? So the Hermit in reverse and the Ten of Pentacles in reverse in this situation is are two releases, okay? Number one, you're releasing or stepping out of this hermitage, hermitage stage because you have found the answers you were looking for, indicative in the Ace of Wands here in your overall energy, and you are releasing these negative attachments, these false realities, whatever. The Ten of Pentacles in reverse it right now is speaking directly to the devil in reverse that was underneath everything on the deck, okay? Excellent work, guys. You really did the damn thing. Don't let your ego get in the way, okay? We have the Queen of Pentacles with the Seven of Wands in reverse. So um, I'm picking up a few things here. The Queen of Pentacles could be you, Aries. Um, it could be you stepping into uh, your feminine power and grounding your femininity within your physical reality. And if that's the case, the seven of wands in reverse is is confirming that and saying you're no longer putting up defenses against connecting with your feminine aspects or against grounding your feminine aspects. There, I'm also picking up that there could be some sort of karmic relationships um, and the karmic partner is represented by the queen of pentacles that you are no longer standing for, you are no longer defending, you are no longer fighting for or fighting against. Again, if this is what you're experiencing, then you have come to the realization that this partnership that you've been in, whether it's romantic, um, a friendship, or like a business situation, it's not something you stand for anymore. It's not something you want to fight for anymore. You want to release this and move on with your life, okay? Yeah. And so when you went in, when you went within, in this hermit stage, um, now let, let's talk, okay, let's talk about karmic partnerships in the sense of a marriage, okay? Um, when you went within, in your hermitage stage, you realized that this marriage that you had with the Ten of Pentacles um, and the Queen of Pentacles was not actually the relationship or the physical setup that you ultimately wanted, that was ultimately the best thing for you, okay? Uh, I am picking up some manipulative energies here with this Queen of Pentacles in relation to this situation that some of you are resonating with. And this hermitage stage that you are now coming out of has inspired you and caused you to see the light in whatever sort of manipulation is in pl at play here. And you're no longer standing for it. You're no longer fighting against it. You're no longer fighting for it, okay? You are, in essence, taking your power back with the Ace of Wands and looking to move forward with your life once this cycle really comes to an end, okay? Moving forward, we have the Six of Pentacles in reverse, which is right under the Ace of Wands, and the Emperor in reverse. All right, all right, all right, all right. So, um, and uh, the reason why I said the Six of Pentacles was in reverse right under the Ace of Wands is because there has been a, an illumination or a realization of controlling energies, okay, manipulative energies, and a lack of give or take. Now, this could be coming from someone in your life that you consider to be a twin flame in the emperor as the emperor, okay, this would be a, a indicative of the divine masculine, um, or just a masculine energy within your life that you have come to realize has just been taking and not giving anything back. There has been an imbalance in this relationship. But also, Aries, this is your card, the Emperor, okay? So this could be talking about you. You could have come to the realization that you are in, you were in a relationship in which you were imbalanced 
um, the give and take with your partner was imbalanced or you yourself have been just taking, taking, taking and not really giving anything back. Okay. So in that sense, now I'm picking up another, another, uh, another scenario here in that sense, in relation to this queen of pentacles and this 10 of pentacles, Aries, if you are the one that's coming to the realization that you have been manipulative and not really giving back what you have received, then this ace of wands, uh, yeah, this ace of wands, this inspiration is just that you realizing, oh shit. No wonder everything went to 11-11 on the counter. No wonder everything went to shit here with the Ten of Pentacles because I wasn't doing my part. And now you're no longer on the defensive here with the Seven of Wands because I feel like you could have been like all rah, rah, sis, boom, ba. I'm going to do what I'm going to do and it's going to, you're either going to like it or you're not with the, with the Emperor in reverse. Now you could be releasing that energy and saying, oh no, I am ready to step up to the plate and make this give and take within our relationship a balanced one. Okay. Moving forward, we have the star in reverse. I'm picking up illusion there uh, with the eight of wands in reverse. So, um, lack of hope, lack of faith, sure. But the main thing I was picking up on, um, was, uh, oh shoot. What was I picking up on? Illusion. Okay. Following a false dream, something that no longer, that, yes, something that no longer serves you. And with the eight of wands in reverse, I am picking up a cease or a halt towards communication towards movement in this direction because there has been a realization that this is a false hope. This is a false reality. This is not something that's really going to be able to withstand any sort of stability that, and, and in reality, what you are looking for Aries is stability. Okay. Um, with the eight of wands in reverse, I'm picking up a lack of communication. Um, and so with the star here also, um, there could be someone in your life, Aries, that you considered to be your star, but communication was cut off. And that is part of what has caused you to really go within and reassess the situation and come out of it with this brand new inspiration here with the Ace of Wands, okay? Yeah. But I'm also, I'm also seeing, with the Eight of Wands in reverse, I'm seeing a cease in movement. Okay, now I don't want people to think that because you're not necessarily moving in the same direction as you were in the past, that means that everything has gone to the shitter. No. But what I am seeing is that the star was guiding you to a certain extent, but things weren't necessarily going the way you wanted them to go. There, You could have just been caught up in a shit ton of expectation and um, uh, unrealistic uh, expectations also that's something I'm resonating with and so now that you have come to understand that the, you, you cannot with the eight of wands in reverse you cannot continue in the same way you have stopped you have changed the game you have changed your direction you have changed your approach to the situation which is indicative of the ace of wands you could still be up in your head about it is this the right thing to do what happens if this person doesn't come back what happens if I never speak to this person again what happens if this person just forgets about me and moves on. If that's the case, then so be it. Obviously that person wasn't really meant for you to have in your life for a long time, don't you think? Maybe this situation or this person was just a catalyst to get you to break out of this Eight of Swords energy, to get you to break out of this codependency with the devil and this lack of balance or reciprocation within the uh, balance with a give and take with the six of pentacles in reverse and was a catalyst to get you to finally end these cycles with the world. Maybe. And if that's the case, that's pretty beautiful, don't you think? Because now that you are really ending these cycles, you can move forward and find something that truly is that real representation of the 10 of pentacles upright for you. Yeah. Moving forward, we have the Five of Swords in reverse, laying down that conflict, laying down that fight, laying down the self-deprecating energies, the lose-lose situations. Yes? Excellent. With the Hanged Man in reverse, which is so funny because the Hanged Man and the Hermit, to me, are very similar energies. The Hanged Man, or I'm sorry, the Hermit talks about um, um, isolation and going within to find your inner light. The hanged man talks about self-imposed isolation in order to see something differently. And this is what you have done, Aries. You have isolated yourself. You have 
um, changed your perspective on the situation, indicative of the Ace of Wands up here in your overall energy. And because of that, now you're laying down this fight. Again, with the Seven of Wands in reverse, you're laying down this fight. You're not fighting for this anymore. It's not worth it. It is a lose-lose situation. Even if you do come to a point where you can one-up someone else, Aries, what's that really going to do for you? In the end, what's that really going to do for you? Is it going to ultimately get you to what you want, or are you just going to be continuing these false, codependent, icky, um, um, toxic cycles? Right? Hallelujah. Next, we have the wheel in reverse with the page of swords. Okay, so the wheel in reverse, at first, it was me, I, I was picking up um, that, you know, you could, you're, you're no longer turning the wheel in this same, oh God, my ear is ringing like crazy right now. You're no longer turning the wheel in this self-deprecating manner, okay? And in that case, you're kind of, you might be on the lookout here with the Page of Swords. Kind of feeling defensive is a, a little bit of an energy that I'm picking up here because this is something that's so new to you. You're kind of like, all right, all right, someone stepped to me. Yeah, okay, I get that, Aries. But at the same time, like, nah, that's not gonna help you. Because ultimately, that could just keep the wheel spinning in these negative cycles anyway. Um, but the, you could be just seeking out information, trying to understand how to move forward now that you have released these cycles that no longer serve you. Now, on the other hand, I am picking up that for those of you who are connecting with the message in this way, in that you have stopped um, giving to this toxic situation, now someone is watching you. Now someone is feeling the their wheel is turning in a direction that they didn't necessarily expect because they were all up in their manipulative energies. They thought you were just going to be there spinning this wheel with them, giving and giving and giving, and they weren't going to have to give anything back. But now that you stopped spinning that wheel in this way, now their attention is peaked and they're like, uh-oh, well, where's this person going? Now this could be you, Aries. You could be that one that was in the manipulative energy and now you realize that this person has pulled away from you and you're trying to figure out what the fuck to do and where the fuck they're going. Or this could be you, Aries, that has stopped spinning the wheel and now they are in that energy of, holy shit, what the, what the fuck do I do now? How do I approach this person now? How do I get this person back? How do I get this relationship back? If that, if that is the case, if you are the one that has stopped spinning the wheel, Aries, don't look back because ultimately if they are really meant for you if they really want to be with you if they really want to have this relationship with you because i feel like if you're the one that spun stopped spinning the wheel and i'm resonating with this so i'm, I'm going to put it out there this way if you're the one that stopped spinning the wheel then um you're fully prepared or maybe getting getting prepared to give whatever love and affection you were giving towards someone you're about you're ready to give it to someone else and now they're shit in their pants <laughs> because they know that, they, that they're not receiving that love and affection from you anymore and they want it back. But you see, if they really want it back, they're going to have to come correct. They're going to have to turn their emperor status upright and not be manipulative. Yeah, still stand in your emperor power. Okay, if we're talking twin flames here, if you're identifying with that, with that path still, if you're resonating with that path still, be in your emperor power. Okay, be in your masculine you know, your divine masculine power, but be integritous about it. Don't be an asshole. Don't be manipulative. Don't be out to do things for you just for the sake of you and fuck everyone else. Hell no. Be an authentic masculine energy with integrity. All right? You don't have to express yourself the way a feminine energy would. You don't. But at the same time, you do not get to manipulate people. Okay? All right, that was a little rough, <laughs> but hey, I tell it like it is. Next, we have the Seven of Pentacles in reverse with the High Priestess. All right, so here, here is the energy of, of no, longer, no longer contemplating, no longer, um, why am I hearing backstabbing? Okay, um, maybe no longer allowing yourself to be backstabbed for the sake of trying to understand how to um, heal the situation, no longer procrastinating, no longer standing in this contemplative state of, 
how did I get here and how do I move forward? And that's happening with the help of the high priestess. You or whoever is resonating with this message, either Aries or someone else around you, excuse me, uh, someone is integrating, is what I just heard, integrating with their intuition. So they no longer really have to stand in this physical sense of overanalyzing things. Okay, now they have or you have the wherewithal to, to recognize that something is going on within your life, whether you like it or not, and to then go within and find the true answers to your questions to move forward much quicker. Because with this Seven of Pentacles energy, um, you know, this could take a long time in the physical sense to figure something out. But if you were just to t go within and listen to your intuition you could get your answers much easier. And that's what I feel like is happening here. The answers aren't coming from the external world anymore. The answers are coming from within, from your higher self, from your team, your spirit guides, you know, from God themselves, you know, like the universe themselves, okay? That's, that's really great. All right, finally, in the card storyline here, we have the Knight of Pentacles, upright, okay? This could be you moving forward with something, this new project, You, if you have a new project, Aries, or uh, a new venture, or this could be someone coming to you. I did hear someone's coming to you. That could be a personal message for me. Whoa, and then we have justice upright. So if someone is coming to you, justice is about to be served. And this is not um, someone's coming to you uh, to reprimand you, to get something, to, to, to get something out of you, to, to um, um, to get back at you. No, this is someone coming forward with um, a, a pentacle of truth, honor, and justice and is looking to make things right. Okay, this could be someone else around you, Aries, or this could be you. You could be approaching, like say in the situation where we were talking about Aries, if you weren't being that manipulative energy here with the emperor in reverse, and now you realize the error of your ways, now you could be moving forward towards someone to bring justice to the situation, to clear the air is what I'm really hearing, okay? Yeah, that's excellent. That's really, really excellent. You could be dealing with a Libra um, with the Justice card here. There could be a Virgo with the Hermit, could be an Aries uh, with the Emperor, or an Earth sign with the Queen of Pentacles, Taurus, Capricorn, or Elite Virgo. The Star could be Aquarius. But again, these are general readings, okay? So, I mean, the, the, the signage of whoever else you're dealing with it really could be anybody it could be a scorpio with the devil okay but no i'm sorry no i'm sorry um capricorn is the devil so we really could have an earth sign because we have pentacles ten of pentacles queen of pentacles and uh the devil and the, the capricorn is the devil but anyway that's really not that important <laughs> to be honest um okay so now let's get into some action oracle steps here from the oracle of the unicorns oops okay last shuffle here And you know, there are, and I'm, I'm feeling compelled to, to share this because I am experiencing this right now. Aries is in Venus for me. Um, so this is resonating on some pretty deep levels. And I already feel fear cropping up um, because there is a certain person that I'm having, I'm actually working on releasing, but not because I want him out of my life, just because I'm re releasing the expectation of the situation. And I'm feeling this Eight of Swords energy starting to generate as I'm taking in this message. And the reason why I'm sharing with this, this with you guys right now is because I want to put forward, I really want to stress, do not worry about it. Work on releasing expectation. And maybe this is other people's energy that I'm picking up on, like you, Aries, or whoever's cross-watching for you, Aries. Do not let your fears and do not let expectations creep back up into your life and then all of a sudden or into your 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 mind and then all of a sudden the devil is turned right up right side up again and you are caught in expectation um, um and all that stuff if someone is meant to if if you have served your soul contract with this person and they leave your life it is for the best ultimately there is someone else that's going to show up hello 
Knight of Pentacles, and Justice. Ultimately, if there's someone in your life that you have been very much attached to, very much expecting some sort of relationship or commitment or whatever with them, and they leave your life for good, understand that that is meant to be for a reason because someone else is coming forward with a true, a true pentacle of commitment or whatever it is you're looking for that will bring justice to your situation, okay? <laughs> and that's a lot of a lot of advice for myself <laughs> as well as others. So let's get, there it is. Okay, you got three cards. Aries, you got three cards here from the, or, from the unicorns. We have imagination, envision a new reality, give yourself permission to dream, believe in unlimited possibilities, okay? That falls directly in line with what I was literally just saying. And it's also... Um, falling in line with this Ace of Wands here, okay? Allow yourself to receive new inspiration. Allow your, your passions to be reignited in a way that are much more healthy, much more beneficial for you, yeah? Next, we have strength. This challenge will make you stronger. You will get through to the other side. Look for the gifts in this situation, okay? So even in the case where you are releasing expectations of someone, and ultimately, they're meant to come back to you. Like maybe, maybe this, the expect the person that you're releasing is in fact going to come back to you with something new and something different, and justice is going to be brought into this situation. If that, even if that, if that is the case, or whether it's not the case, uh, but I do feel like I want to talk about if that is the case, just go with the flow. Continue releasing expectation. Continue releasing your attachments to whatever this devil energy is, okay? You have the strength to do it. And when you continue to do that and you move forward with the situation, regardless of what the, may, the outcome may be, you are in fact enacting your personal strength and willpower and you are in fact becoming stronger through the process, okay? Finally, you have nature. Ground yourself. Find a sanctuary in nature. Connect with the elementals, okay? So this is talking about, obviously this is talking about grounding yourself. This is talking about getting back to your roots, getting back to what it is you truly desire and what you truly want to manifest within your life. Allow nature to help clear you. I just saw a cardinal fly outside my window. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Allow nature to replenish you. Allow nature to help you release this devil energy and see what it is you truly want to manifest in your life and allow the energies of Gaia and the earth to help you manifest this, okay? Help, let, allow the earth to help you clear your energy is what that's really saying. All right, finally, we're going to get into some spiritual guidance here from the Crystal Mandala deck. All right, spirit. Best messages for Aries for June. Okay, and I'm just going to ask for the cards just to come out. Best messages. There we go. Her eye ever open. Number 37. Uh, Goddess Tara and Tibetan Quartz. Okay, already the channel message here is illumination, okay? Uh, and it's falling in line with the Ace of Wands that we have here. Her eye ever open, seeing the truth for what it is, seeing this a toxic attachment to devil energy, okay? And this could be, this could just be for you, but it could also be for both people in, in, involved, both parties involved. Both of you are starting to see the light. And it may not be apparent in the physical you may not have physical confirmation of it, but who the fuck cares? Ultimately, you know what you know to be true, and you know what you need to do for yourself, Aries. So you need to just move forward with that, with strength, and not allowing you know the physical representation of things to get you down. Keep moving forward towards what it is you truly want and desire, and allow the universe to work with you to bring that in, regardless of how it looks, regardless of how long it takes, seemingly, because time is an illusion, regardless of any of that shit. 
I do just want to read the beginning of this definition for you. We bring you the empowerment of her eye ever open. The divine protection around you is absolute and complete. Your simple quest for the universal mother to watch out, I'm sorry, your simple request for the universal mother to watch out for you and to protect what has meaning for you allows you to live your life, do your work, and know the most powerful one is caring for your well-being on all levels. You can trust be free from worry and remain open to the world with joy in your heart. So that's also speaking to strength. It's speaking to the ability to just move forward in your path with your truth, knowing that you will be provided for and protected, okay, by both earth and spirit. Um, I'm just reading through to see if there's anything else here. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Because anything else I'm seeing here was already spoken about. I, actually, I do want to read this one paragraph. As you learn to support your open and loving nature with strong boundaries and self-respect, the universal mother, Tara, with her eye ever open, will also watch out for you. As you expand your light, she will create a field of fierce compassion and protective grace around you. If one fearful person attempting to attack you could cause you to lose your footing and prevent many people from benefiting from your light, she will step in, often without you even realizing that you need divine protection and support. You can relax and know that once you make a commitment to the Universal Mother to help nurture the world with love, you shall benefit from her unconditional grace, protection, and support. With her eye ever open, nothing shall go unnoticed, and her notice stops fear in its tracks. There you go. All right, Aries. So there it is. That's your reading for the month of June. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I look forward to connecting with you guys for the month of July. Yeah. Take care. Bye.